sail through the secrets, unlock the gate, learn how Panama's Canal seals its fate. A marvel of engineering, a watery maze, discover the wonders in so many ways. From lock gates to gravity-powered wonders, get ready to dive deep into how Panama Canal works with Zipic Productions. Engineering Feat of the Panama Canal The Panama Canal boasts remarkable feats that exemplify human engineering prowess. Notably, it grapples with an intriguing geographical quirk. The Pacific Ocean sits slightly higher than the Atlantic Ocean, posing a unique challenge for ships. To bridge this watery gap, vessels sailing through the canal must conquer the Panamanian landscape, ascending a whopping 26 meters above sea level to reach the opposite end. The secret behind this astonishing feat lies in the ingenious lock gates. These gateways act as elevators for ships, lifting them to a higher level as they enter the canal and gently lowering them back to sea level on the other side. The Panama Water Lock System, as it's known, stands as a monumental testament to the engineering prowess of its era. It was meticulously crafted to cater to the needs of ships, effectively saving them precious transit time. The canal's ability to triumph over the natural sea level difference between the two oceans is a testament to human ingenuity and the unwavering determination to conquer even the most formidable geographical challenges. Panama Canal Locks Design The Panama Water Lock System is a crucial part of the Panama Canal, featuring a total of three sets of locks, which translates to 12 individual locks, facilitating the movement of vessels between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans via man-made lakes and channels. Before the canal underwent expansion, which concluded in 2016, it had a simpler setup with two lines of locks situated at both ends of the canal. The expansion, however, brought about a third lane and an additional set of locks capable of accommodating larger vessels. The locks are strategically placed in both the Atlantic and Pacific sides, functioning to raise and lower vessels to match the Panama Canal's elevation, which sits at 26 meters above sea level. On the Pacific side, there are two chambered Miraflores locks and the single chambered Pedro Miguel locks. On the Atlantic side, you'll find the three chambered Gotten locks. Each of these three lock sites consists of paired locks with two parallel flights, allowing vessels to move simultaneously in opposing directions. However, Due to safety considerations, ships currently use only six pairs of these massive locks for transit, and they move in a single direction at any given time, primarily when navigating the challenging Culebra cut section of the canal. The original locks of the Panama Canal are 33.53 meters or 110 feet wide and have a length of 320 meters or 1,050 feet. The lock walls vary in thickness, ranging from 15 meters at the base to 3 meters at the top. These dimensions define the size of a ship that can pass through the canal, known as Panamax. The third set of locks, introduced during the expansion project, now accommodates larger vessels. With the new Panamax standards, ships with an overall length of 366 meters, a beam of 49 meters, and a draft of 15.2 meters can navigate the canal. The locks have varying lifting capacities. Gatun locks can lift a vessel by 85 feet, Pedro Miguel locks by 54 feet, and Miraflores locks by a range of 64.5 feet to 43 feet due to extreme tides. The lock gates of the Panama Canal serve as the dividers between the chambers, and they are remarkably robust, capable of holding thousands of liters of water. The locks can fill or empty in under 10 minutes, with each pair of lock gates takes just 2 minutes to open. The Panama lock gates come in a range of sizes from 14.33 to 24.99 meters, with a thickness of 2.13 meters. Each gate comprises two leaves measuring 19.81 meters in width, designed in a V-shape with a point upstream to withstand the force of the water. These gates only open when the water levels on both sides are equal. Additionally, a hefty fender chain weighing around 30,000 pounds at the end of each lock prevents ships from colliding with the gates before they open. To facilitate the passage of vessels through the locks, each chamber must be filled with a staggering 26,700,000 US gallons of water. This operation relies on the natural gravity flow of water from lakes such as Gatun, Alajuela, and Miraflores. Complementing the lock system are 18-foot wide water culverts, intricately connected carrying water from these lakes into the chambers to raise vessels and conversely from the chambers to the next lock or the sea to lower vessels. The entire lock system operates electrically with control rooms situated on the center wall of the upper flight of locks. These control rooms oversee the vessel's movements within the lock chambers, 
utilizing electric towing locomotives known as mules. Typically, ships require six of these mules, three on each side, to navigate the locks when entering or exiting the canal. Operation in detail The Panama Water Lock System operates through a well-defined series of steps, ensuring the smooth transit of vessels between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Let's break down this intricate process into simpler terms. Step 1. As a vessel approaches the lower chamber of the canal locks, the journey begins. It's a bit like an elevator ride for ships. Step 2. The valve of the first chamber opens and water flows naturally, driven by gravity, from the higher chamber to the lower one. This action brings the water level in the chamber down to sea level, aligning it with the ocean waters. Step 3. Now the lock gate opens to welcome the ship into the chamber. Once the vessel is inside, the gate securely closes behind it, sealing the chamber. Step 4. In the next phase, the valve of the adjacent chamber is open. This action raises the water level to match that of the first chamber. Step 5. With the water level's balance, it's time for the lock gate to open again, permitting the ship to move into the next chamber. Step 6. The cycle continues until the water levels are equalized in each chamber. Finally, the ship exits the lock, entering the extensive 77-kilometer long canal. Now at the other end of the canal, a similar process unfolds, but in reverse to lower the vessel back to sea level. Let's delve into a bit more detail for better understanding. Well, for a ship embarking on the canal journey from the Atlantic end, heading southeast, the first stop is the first sea-level lock chamber at Gatun Locks. Once inside, the lock door is sealed tightly under the supervision of the lock master. Simultaneously, the valve opens to allow water to flow from the adjacent second lock chamber, which sits 28 feet above sea level. Water travels through concealed pipes into the first chamber until the water levels align. Notably, no pumps are needed here. The entire process hinges on gravity's fundamental principle and the fact that water naturally seeks its own level. When the water levels in two adjacent chambers match, the flow of water from the water culvert ceases. At this point, with the water level harmonized between the first and second chambers, the valve is closed by the lock master, and the watertight lock doors connecting the two chambers swing open. This action enables the ship to proceed to the second lock chamber. The same procedure repeats between the second and third chambers, gradually elevating the ship to the level of Gatun Lake. Upon the closure of the final valve and the opening of the last watertight lock door, the ship finds itself raised 85 feet above sea level, ready to continue its journey onward to the Pacific. Now, for a ship's journey in the opposite direction, from the Pacific end at the Pedro Miguel Locks, the process is reversed. As the ship enters the first chamber, the watertight door seals shut and the valve opens in that lock chamber. This permits water to drain from the first chamber into the lower second chamber. Once the water levels align, the watertight doors between these chambers open, allowing the ship to progress through the galer cut towards the Miraflores locks, where the process of lowering the ship back to sea level is completed. In this intricate dance of water and engineering, the Panama water lock system seamlessly transports vessels across the Panama Canal, bridging two great oceans. Significance of the Panama Canal So you see how the Panama Canal, a marvel of engineering, connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans by cutting through Panama's narrow isthmus. Since its completion in 1914, it has revolutionized global trade, shortening voyages by thousands of kilometers. In 2022, the canal hosted 13,814 vessels, carrying 434.3 million tons of cargo, mainly containers, LNG, and petroleum products. The United States, China, and Japan are the top users. It significantly boosts the U.S. economy, making shipping between the coasts faster and more efficient. Panama also reaps substantial revenue, while the canal plays a strategic role in securing the global supply chain. Wow, what an amazing journey through the inner workings of the Panama Canal. If you're as fascinated as we are, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more incredible insights. Now here's a question for you. Which engineering feat impressed you the most in this video? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. Well, thanks for watching Zipac Productions and we'll see you in the next one.